So this mentality has played many categories of people, including myself, um, and it's the victim mentality. This mentality will literally keep you as a slave for the rest of your life. You've seen it with yourself, I'm sure. You've probably seen it with other people around you. And it's this idea that everything in life happens to you and not for you, right? The victim mentality, I'll give you an example, like a personal example for me. So when 2020 um, happened, there was the, the George Floyd um, shooting that occurred. And then, you know, we started to have riots. We started to, you know, Black Lives Matter was on the rise. And, you know, like it, it became this almost like a brand. And I remember falling into that, that sphere of, of life. And, and again, I don't mean any of this to be insulting to my people. Um, I don't mean for any. And this is a very sensitive topic for a lot of people, including myself. But. The reality is I started to see a lot of this victim-like mentality. I started to see a lot of this woe is me-like mentality, including in myself. Like everybody that's around you is racist, even though they're really not. Like you just, you start to just see the, see how other people are affecting you versus how you're affecting yourself and how you can affect other people. It's, it, it, it was crazy for me to see that. And like, even like when I was, when I was raising money for my startup, like I, venture capitalists wouldn't want to invest in me and I would be like, oh, it's because I'm black. That's why they didn't invest in me. No, it's because my business model didn't make sense. It's because I was way too early. I was pre-seed. So in venture capital, um, there is pre-seed, seed, series A, series B, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are different types of venture capitalists that just do not invest in smaller companies, right? Because it just doesn't make any economical sense for them to invest in a smaller company because they have greater money to deploy capital to other companies that are bigger so that they can get a greater sense of return and there's less risk. I get that now, but at the time I didn't get that. So I'm talking to these VCs and the reason why I knew them was because of my network because I went to a very prestigious school called Babson College. So like I got a lot of introductions to these bigger VCs and I was like, man, they don't like me because I'm black. They're racist. Like that was the narrative that I was playing in my head. And I started to see myself fall into this trap until I had to break out of the cycle because I'm like, man, I just don't understand the game. So when I started reading more about venture capital, I started reading more about startups and reading more about how that works and how the, the, how to actually build one. Like I started to understand why I was getting rejected by VCs. It wasn't because I was black. It was because I just didn't understand the game. I didn't understand the unit economics of what I was doing. I didn't understand their actual, like the, the incentives for why they invest in companies. I didn't understand how to align my incentives with their incentives. So I say this and, and it started to, to change the way that I think because I was like, man, if I thought they were racist because they weren't giving me money, but I really just didn't understand the systems that they played in, then I need to figure out and, and the crazy part is there were black founders out there that were actually raising a lot of money that were actually building successful companies. So it shows me that it's possible, but I kept assuming that because I was black, that that was the reason why people were saying no. And that's the essence of this victim like mentality. You see it not just with black people, because again, this isn't just, this isn't just within the black community. This is within like, even with men, right? Like you look at men and they're like, man, I'm a victim. Like, man, these women don't know anything. These women, they don't like me. Like, oh man, like they, they just don't understand what it, what it takes to be a man. Of course they don't understand how it is to be a man. They're not men. Like, why would they understand that? Then you have to understand why these things are happening to you. Why you can't get a woman to be attracted to you. Why every woman is not wanting to talk to you, is not eager to talk to you. That is a character flaw. That's something that's going on inside of you. That's some, or maybe outside of you. Maybe it's your appearance that you need to change. These are controllable factors. Same with me with the venture capital thing that I told you about when I was a black founder that was trying to rape. Another thing was the identity that I had, a black founder. Why, why couldn't I just be a founder, right? Why did I have to put this label on me like, to be able to say that I'm, I'm this disenfranchised person or I'm this minority in this space. I could have just been a founder and just kept going the way that I moved. That's actually a lot more powerful because yeah, obviously I look, I'm black, like people know that. I don't need to say it, right? I, don't, I used to put like black owned business with my startup that I was doing. I removed that because it's like, I don't need to say that. That almost cheapens what I'm doing to a certain extent because and this is just the reality. I've talked to, you know, white people about it. It's like, 
it makes and white people who care about me like and actually give me the real truth about this stuff it cheapens what i'm doing it almost seems like i'm just trying to be there and i'm just this black owned business and i'm like it's not a regular business like why why does it have to be a, you see what i'm saying like and i used to get offended by that but then i understood what they were saying and i removed it and i saw a lot more results i started actually raising money now you know what i mean like and people started to see, oh yeah, he's a black founder, of course. Like they said, I didn't need to say it because I looked the part. And this victim-like mentality, again, I'm gonna take that example out of the picture for now because I wanna go into other examples so you can understand how this victim mentality plays out in different, different arenas with different types of people. So back to the, the man thing, like, you know, man right now, you look at like the red pill space, you look at the, even the, 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 the manosphere, whatever they call it, like these men, they, they practice victim mentality every single time they make a video, every single time they talk about women, all they can do is bash women and say, women are the reasons why society is how it is. And like women, like it's women, women are bad, women are evil, like it's almost like they're demonizing women when in reality, the problem was you, fam. The problem was you all along. You did not improve yourself to the point where you could actually attract women. You don't understand how it, they're like, oh, don't be in a long-term relationship with a woman. Don't be with just one woman. There's just no way that you could do that. Women are so bad, like you, you can't be in a one. Bro, just because it didn't work for you doesn't mean it can't work for other people. That is a character flaw that you have. That's something that you don't know how to do. There are many people who are, in, I've known people who are in very successful long-term relationships. They've literally had successful, long, 20, 30, 40 year relationships. My parents have been in a relationship for, or in a marriage, sorry, for over 30 years. So I know this exists. I know it's possible. It's not easy. Of course not. And okay, you can talk about, oh, well, well, men have urges and, and you know, in, in modern times, modern women this, modern women that. Yeah, they modern to you, bro. They modern to you. That's another victim-like mentality. Oh, well, all these modern women just can't get anything right. Well, no, you just don't, you're just not the man that they want to get it right for. It, this stuff is going to hurt, bro. Like, cause this is, these are the things that I had to really go through in myself. Like I actually had to self-reflect on like all of these different things. Cause I was, I was pulling in this victim like information from different spaces and, and making this victim identity for myself. And I know you've done that or you're currently doing that right now where it's like this woe is me mentality where you think that like everything is going against you. When in reality, you need to change yourself. You need to understand what you need to improve to not have that scenario happen to you. Like it was when I was younger, man, like I was this super skinny kid, man. And I was walking around and like women wouldn't notice me. Like I didn't have, and that's the thing. I didn't have issues with women specifically. I was great with women. Like they liked me, but there wasn't that like severe attraction that I, I was starting to get as I moved forward in life. There wasn't that like extreme, like they would see me from across the room and like flock. I didn't get that, but I saw other people getting it. And I was like, oh, well, and I would make up an excuse. I don't even know, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, because I don't have a beard or because I don't have this, bro. that's not why. Or because I don't have status or I don't have, I don't have money. I don't have this. That's why these women don't No, bro. Coping a victim mentality. Someone who has a victim mentality has to find some sort of coping me mechanism for why their life is not working the way that it needs to work. It's really weird. It's really like, it's such a damaging mentality. And I had this when I was young too, especially when it comes to, to dating and women. And it wasn't until I was like, man, okay, I'm very scrawny right now. I'm skinny. I'm lanky. I'm about, at the time I, in high school, I was like, like 5'11", 6 feet. It's probably like 6 feet or no, 6'1". I was around 6'1". Um, and I was trying to figure out like, man, like how I get women? Like, I don't know. Bro, the minute I got to college, I had the same problem. I was still trying to figure it out. And by the way, in high school, I was in relationships. I had women, but I, I wanted more. I wanted that, that universal attraction. Like any woman I talked to, they would like me, right? And so when I got to college, I realized, man, I'm skinny. I'm still skinny. So I started training for a whole summer and I transformed my body. I gained a ton of muscle and I started just looking insane. And literally everything changed. 
Everything changed from that day. My confidence changed because the character that you build when you're training, people don't talk about this. It's not just about looking big. It's about the mentality behind how you get there. Naturally, there's a difference, right? Like I had to go through hardships for three months. I had to really grind. I had to eat properly. I had to, I actually didn't even eat as, as properly as I should have, but I was training hard. I was going hard in the gym. I was disciplined. I was waking up early every single day to go to this gym to build a body that I wanted. And at the end of that, my whole entire paradigm with women shifted completely. It, then it was just like, man, left and right, left and right. It, it just came, it became easy. So I became the person that solved the problem that I thought I had because I couldn't control it. And so that's another example. I see another example, and, and, and this is gonna be even more sensitive, women in the workplace. I see a lot of women like, oh, well, I can't make it in corporate, or they, they not hiring me because I'm a woman, they're this, they're that, and maybe that's true. Maybe that actually could potentially be the case. But what I'm here to say is I've been in the corporate world, my VP of sales was a woman, very powerful woman, like everybody in the organization respected her. She was making a ton of money. I, I looked up to her. I went to her for advice. Like I've seen women succeed. I've seen women, very powerful women entrepreneurs. There's women like, I can't start a business or I can't raise money because I'm a woman. It's like, maybe that's true. But maybe there's a chance for you to change that narrative by actually improving and learning the game and figuring out how other people are succeeding, how other women are succeeding, right? It's the same with men. Maybe it's true that long-term relationships don't work because women, modern women today aren't, aren't submissive or whatever they call it. And it's like, why don't you look around and see other men who are succeeding in long-term relationships and how they're doing that and learn from them? Because obviously there's something that you don't know that they know. That's what you have to understand. And that's where the victim mentality breaks because you start, the, the way that you break out of this mentality, because this victim mentality will, will keep you as a slave forever. Literally, you will have shackles on your feet forever. You'll not be able to move. You'll always think that everything is happening to you and not for you. It's a perspective shift. That's how you get out of this victim mentality. And you just have to start analyzing how other people have succeeded and getting the information that you need to be able to go from point A to point B where you wanna go. Everything in life, the only reason why you're not getting what you want in life is because you do not have the right information. Once you have the right information and you have the right mentality behind that, the conqueror mentality, that you will go get what you wanna go get because you have control over yourself and you can actually build for yourself, that's where everything changes. I see it in the black community as well. I see people, they're like, you know what? Forget this victim mentality. No, I, I need to actually become the best version of myself. I need to go get certifications to get into tech. Man, so much of us are getting into tech right now. We're making a lot of money. We have our online businesses. We're making a lot of money. Like, there are people who are doing this. Like, Kai Sanat, man. I look at Kai Sanat, a, 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 a kid that came from, from New York, from the slums of New York, bro, like the, the gutter of New York to like, now he's one of the most famous, popular streamers, YouTubers that we've ever seen. Like making waves, making impact in the community. Like I see this, I know y'all, some of y'all don't like, you might not like Kanye West. I look at him, I'm like, bro, you came from a single parent household. That's a big victim-like mentality that we have in our community where it's like, oh, because I came from a single parent household, I can't be successful. Or, or like, I, look, at, look at Kanye West. Look at where he got because of his mom. Because of that scenario, look at Jay-Z where he, he literally used to sell drugs on the street. Like he came from, from New York and look where he's at now, this billionaire mogul. And you're telling me you can't make it to where you wanna get to because you're black? Like make it make sense. The opportunities are endless. We have the internet. This is the age of information. There are, the, the internet has leveled the playing field for everybody. Before the internet, yes. I could say that there, there were some, some issues, especially with like, you know, being black and trying to get, but now the internet has literally leveled the playing field. Now it's not about, oh, I'm a woman, so I can't do this. I see so many women who are successful, especially on the internet, right? But being black, I see so many black people who are successful on the internet. I see men who are extremely successful with women. I watch them on the internet, I see how they move. You have no excuse, they literally give you the blueprint. 
They give you their blueprint. You can watch their evolution over time. And you still have the excuse of, oh, because I'm this, that's why I can't get that. No, you have to think, no, because I lack the information to get to where I want to go. Because everything is about information. That's why you can't be a victim. You're, you're not a victim. You're not. And even if you are, you have, to, you have to have the mental model that you are not a victim. You control your success. You control your future. You need to live with that mental model. Even if you didn't, even if you don't have control over your future, by having that mental model, you'll be able to wake up every day and try to make progress and try to improve every single day. But you need to break out of this victim-like mentality that's keeping you a slave, that's keeping you where you're at. You cannot break out of your environment. Uh, this other example popped up. I wanted to move to Atlanta when I was in Boston because I was like, man, like I'll be around more black people. That's how we are as black people. We want to be around other black people and just surround ourselves in an echo chamber of just black people. And again, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. I hate that mentality. I hate that mentality because you, you, you have to understand that like, and again, I love being around black people. I'm gonna say this right now. I love it. Like I love going back. I like going to areas that are just, I like going to LA. I like going to, whether it's Atlanta, Houston, New York, I love being around black people. But if I can only be around black people and I feel uncomfortable being around other people, then I've failed. I now have a victim like mentality. I need my own people around me for me to succeed. Is that what it is? No. And that's why for me, I went from Boston to Utah. I had so many black people like, bro, why are you moving to Utah? There's no black people down there. I'm like, okay, well, I'll be the first one then. And there are actually a lot of black people around here. But the reality is I did not need the crutch of having just the black community to succeed in my life. I came out here, started networking, start, started talking to important people, started shaking hands with people who were Mormon. They were like, oh, Mormon people, they're racist. They don't like black people. They, man, they like me. And they like a lot of black people out here that are thriving right now. And, and I'm starting to see a lot of them. And a lot of them adopt the same mentality that I'm trying to help you understand right now, where it's not, they're not victims. They came here and they conquered. They took what they wanted to take with the confidence that they have, with the intellect that they were able to develop, the information they were able to build, they were able to conquer. And they were literally, I've seen some of the most successful black people out here on the low. They don't have no social media. They don't, they don't do anything. They're just very successful. They've done their work here in Utah. And I've seen this in real time. And I've had people, I've had I've had black people in other places that are pre predominantly black and they're si sitting in the same position that they've been in for years. Ask me why I moved to Utah. Of course, I'm gonna move here. This is a, this is a place of opportunity. It's up and coming. And, and I don't wanna blow up the spot like that because I know people will be watching them and start looking into it. But I knew that there was opportunity here. I knew that this was going to be different. I knew that because there wasn't a lot of Black people here, I could stand out even more. And that's what I did. So you have to understand that this victim-like mentality, it's keeping you down. It's keeping you where you're at for way too long and you have this desire to improve. And again, I say this because I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking from my direct experiences, but this can work with so many other, this can work for so many other things. Like this can work for for people who are in third world countries. I've seen people in third world countries make over $10,000 a month online doing freelancing. I've lived, just because you're in a third world country doesn't mean that you, you need to you know, go in and, 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 and feel like you're this victim and you can't do this, you can't do that because you're, you're, for example, from India. I've seen Indians make a lot of money, man. Like, don't let that victim mentality keep you where you're at. You have control. Take control of your life, become a better person, and you will start to see improvements in every aspect of your life. And you'll start to, the, the wealthiest people do not have a victim-like mentality. They don't. They don't. Wealthy minorities, wealthy, wealthy women, well, they don't have a victim-like mentality. They have a conqueror's mentality. They know that they can go get what they want. Nobody can stop them. There's nothing on this planet that can stop them from getting exactly what they want. And that's what you need to build. So watch this video, internalize it. I know I'm gonna get hate for the examples that I gave, but it's just the truth. It's just my experience, it's what I've lived. It's how I've changed my mindset. I used to have a victim-like mentality. That's completely gone for me now. So watch this, internalize it, like, comment, share. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna catch you on the next video. I appreciate you.
Um, let's keep this going.